Okay, so now that we're familiar with Management Studios a little bit and the Query Editor, in this section we want to talk a little bit about basic query syntax before we start writing MDX. So this is right here on the screen about the simplest query that you can write in MDX. We have the select statement with nothing selected and then from cube. So if you look at the screenshot on the right, that would return 3,533. So what does that return? Well, anytime you don't select any values, it's going to return whatever the default measure is in your cube. So that might be order quantity, it might be reseller sales amount, it's going to return all reseller sales amount, all order quantity, whatever the default is in your analysis services cube. So that's going to be the easiest query we can write, the simplest query we can write in MDX. We can also request a tuple. So we can say bring back whatever my default measure is here from my cube where it intersects this point. Now remember that a tuple is nothing more than a coordinate in my cube, right? So if you look at the query window over here on the right, what we're pulling back here is Mountain 200 Black for January 1st, 2008, measure sales amount, right? So that's my tuple. So it's going to return the sales amount for the Mountain 200 Black on January 1st, 2008. So we can do that as well. That's a basic tuple, a basic query that we're going to write. Another couple things we want to point out here is just making our code as explicit as possible. You really want to use brackets anytime you're referencing a member in MDX. So remember that we have the table, we kind of have the column, and then within the column we have the different members, right? So you have product, and then inside of the product table we might have product names, and inside of the product names we have all the different members, which might be something like Mountain Bike 200, Mountain Bike 500, Mountain Bike Red those would all be different members within that column or in analysis services terms those would be different members within that attribute hierarchy so anytime we're referencing a member we always want to try to use these square brackets now if there isn't a space or it's not a reserved word like date date is going to be a reserved word or the first character is not a letter or an underscore which means this one starts with a numeric value so this requires a bracket, a reserve word requires a bracket, then you don't have to use these brackets. However, I would still recommend using them because this kind of goes back to what we were talking about a minute ago. When we're writing MDX, it's complicated enough. Let's go ahead and just make our code as explicit as possible so we don't have to worry about there being any problems or any ambiguity or kind of confusion around our MDX code. Or anytime your MDX code contains characters, other than letters, underscores, or numbers. So if you added an ampersand sign or a dash or anything like that, that would also require using brackets. All right, so this is going to be really a writing an MDX query on a single axis. So remember that we don't specify the columns that we want to return in MDX like T-SQL. We actually specify the axis that we want to return those on. So we're saying here, select my measure on the columns axis from the cube. So all we're going to do is return all of internet sales or all of order quantity, whatever we're selecting here for our measure, on columns from the cube. Now the other thing, and I think we've pointed this out, but I'm just going to emphasize this one more time here, is when we say from cube, that's what we're doing our from statement from. So unlike T-SQL where you say from customer table or from product table, in MDX we don't do that. We just say from the cube. So there's not going to be any join statements here. There's not going to be any inner joins or outer joins or any of that. All that's going to be gone. All we're going to do is just bring back the data that exists from that cube. And then we can select all measures, so measures.members on columns from cube. So in the previous slide, we selected a measure on columns. Well, we can also build a query on two axes. So we can bring it back on columns, and then we can say, okay, now we want to bring back all of our geography members on rows. So we, we saw this in module in our first module when we did the MDX versus T-SQL and we were bringing back all the dimension members for Germany. All right, so you could do something like that. Alternatively, you can access the ordinal position of those axes instead of actually naming them. So the columns axis is also the zero axis and the rows axis here is also the one axis. So a lot of times when you see MDX, what you're actually going to see is developers use this zero in the one instead of actually using columns and rows. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. It's 
totally okay to do that. You will see me doing this. I'm going to use 0 and 1 a lot. Just know that 0 means columns and 1 means rows. The other thing I want to point out here is that if you only use one axis in your query, you must use columns. So I can't say select these dimension members and put them on rows. The query will fail. It's going to give you a very ambiguous error message. It's not going to make any sense at all. But essentially the reason it's failing is because you must put those on columns. All right, you must use columns first, so it must be in the ordinal position that you see here. You must use zero before you can use one. Now remember that we said one of the differences between MDX and T-SQL is that in MDX we're, we're querying space, right? We're querying an, a multi-dimensional cube, and because of that, all of our customers are going to intersect with all of our measure groups, as long as that relationship has been designed. So if a customer doesn't have any purchases, they've never purchased anything from us, then that sale reference in the cube is actually empty space. But it still exists in the cube. So whenever I come in here and say, hey, okay, bring back all of my customer.members for internet sales, you will see all of those members that don't have sales, they will also show up in the result set because there is empty space in the cube. And we can remove that by simply using the non-empty keyword and we can use that on either axis. So we can use that on the columns axis or on the rows axis. And that will eliminate any of those empty tuples. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and do our first demo of actually writing MDX code here. And we're just going to cover basic queries and syntax in MDX. Okay, so now we're back in our management studios. And we're going to go ahead and write a couple very basic queries here. So remember we said that the easiest or the simplest query you can possibly write inside of MDX is going to be just select from my cube. All right, so my cube is going to be AdventureWorks. So if I do select from AdventureWorks, I'm going to get a result set down here on the bottom. Now this result set is the default measure in my cube and this is going to be reseller sales amount. Now I just know that by default from working with the AdventureWorks cube but that is the default measure in my analysis services cube. So that's the simplest possible query that we can write. We can also write a query where we add a tuple. So let's go ahead and copy this. Actually, I'm just gonna to add to this one. So let's do a where clause here, and then I'm going to slice this result set by a tuple in my cube. All right, so we know that a tuple is always going to start with an open parenthesis and then a closing parenthesis. And then in our demo slides, we were using product a lot. So I'm going to go into my product dimension. I'm going to find my product attribute hierarchy. Remember that's similar or synonymous with kind of a column in a relational database. So I'm going to find my product column or attribute hierarchy here. And then I'm going to go into the products and I'm just going to find one of my mountain bikes here. So any mountain bike will be fine. Mountain 200 black. All right, so I'm going to grab a specific member here and I'm just going to drag that and drop it. All right, into my tuple. And then I want to add some additional coordinates here. So the next thing I'm going to add is I'm going to go ahead and bring in a date. So any date will be fine. I'm going to go into my date dimension. And then within my date dimension, we're going to have obviously all the different attribute hierarchies that are available. So I'm going to open up the first one here, which is the date. So that's going to be at the day level. And then I'm going to go into the leaf level and what we'll see is all the different members at the day level. So I'm just going to grab January 21st of 2015. And I'm going to change the year here. So I'm going to change this to something like 2013 because I'm working in 2016. All right. So now when I run this, what it's going to do is it's going to give me, and let me go ahead and run it real quick. It's going to give me a null value here. That was not expected. So let me see what I'm doing wrong. Let's remove the date real quick. Make sure that we have space for that product and run that. All right, so that's working. So this is returning all of my reseller sales amount for this specific product. So let's add back in that date. And I think the AdventureWorks cube is a little funny. So I think it only shows data for the last day of the month. So we're gonna try this again on January 1st of uh, January 31st of 2013. Let's run that one more time here. And it's still null. So there's no data. What we're getting here is that there's no data for this actual day that I'm bringing back. All right, so let's try something a little bit different here. I'm going to actually go into 
my calendar year and I'm just going to bring in a specific year so we can get some data and kind of show you how to construct this tuple here. And the reason we're getting this right here and we're getting a null value is just because the data that we actually have here for reseller sales is a little bit funky in this database. All right, so let's try this again. We're going to construct a tuple on the 2013 year and now I can see that it's 1.5 million in sales. So our tuple, the coordinates that we're referencing in the cube, is going to be this specific product for this specific year. And it's going to return all of the retailer sales amount or reseller sales amount because that's the default measure in my cube. So the other thing I want to reference here is whenever you see this ampersand sign here, what that means is that I'm referencing the specific key value for this member. You can also reference the name value. So notice that when I dragged it over from here and I dropped it, it changed from current year 2013 or calendar year 2013 to just ampersign 2013 and that's that key value for that specific member. Now what we can do is we can also reference the name value. So if you're trying to write this out by hand and you don't know the key value you can reference the name value. So I can remove the ampersand sign and then just add in that exact name value that I see down here and now we can run this again and that still works. So we have the flexibility to use either the key value or the name value. So as we go through the class, you're going to see me using both of those interchangeably. Just be aware that anytime you see that ampersand sign there, that means that it's using the key value instead of the actual name value for that member. So each member has a key value and each member has a name value. So that's what we were doing there. The next thing we can do is let's go ahead and I'm going to remove this from my where clause and let's create a single axis query. So we talked about this in the slide deck. We can do single axis queries and we can also do two axis queries, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring over one of my measures. So I'm going to go back to my measures folder. I'm going to go into internet sales amount or internet sales measure group and then I'm going to bring in my internet sales amount measure. And then if I run this right now, this is going to fail. And the reason this fails, and unfortunately it's a, it's a terrible error message, it talks about data mining here, but the reason it fails is remember that this kind of looks like a T-SQL query, right? It looks like we're just bringing back a column from a table. We can't do that in MDX. In MDX we must specify the axis that we want to put this on. So I'm going to put this on my columns axis, which also is the zero ordinal position. So, and by the way, this is how you can comment out code in MDX. I'm going to run this again and now this is going to give us our internet sales. Now since we haven't sliced this by anything this is my internet sales for all time for all products for all geographies because we don't have any kind of slicer on this or any type of filter applied. But this is how we can write a very simple query on a single axis inside of Management Studios. The other thing we can do is remember that we have this ordinal position so if I run this using just on zero we're going to get the same results here. All right, so we're going to get 29 million in sales if we put this on the zeros axis. So the next thing I want to do is let's go ahead and write ourselves a two axis query. So we have the, the columns here. I'm going to put a comma and then after the comma we can bring in something on our rows axis. So let's bring in calendar year. I'm going to go back to my calendar year. So let me drag this over a little bit. And then let's just bring in the 2013 year. And I'm going to put this on rows. So I can do on one, or I could say on rows. And then go ahead and execute this query. And now notice that what we're getting here is we're getting our internet sales amount, but we're only getting it for the year 2013. So we're still getting our internet sales amount, but we're only getting it for the year 2013. So this is a single. This is a single member inside of my tuple. All right, so we, we have a tuple here. It's like a single member. We're not specifying any other coordinates. So it's going to be for all geographies for 2013, for all products for 2013, for all customers for 2013. That's my total internet sales amount. Now, if I want to filter that down to a specific geography, all we have to do is add that to our tuple here. The other thing I want to point out is that if I get rid of this here and I put this in a where clause, the results are going to be the same 
but it's not going to actually tell us that the results are for 2013. All right, so we get the same results if we move this tuple here, or this member that we're referencing. If we move it to the where clause, we get the same results, but it's not actually telling us that these results are for 2013. So that's something to kind of watch out for. But just to let you know, you can do that. So you can move it from rows and move it into the where clause if you so choose. Another thing we can do here is we can also add, let me go ahead and copy this back out real quick, get rid of that altogether actually. But we can also increase this tuple. So remember I said if we only wanted to, if we only want to return the internet sales for a specific product category or a specific country or something like that, then we would have to add those members to our tuple here. So we want to add that to our coordinates. By default, if you don't add it to your coordinates or into your tuple, it's going to use the default member in the cube, which is usually going to be the all level. Now we're going to discuss that in future module in more detail. So I'm not going to get into that too much here, but if you don't specify that coordinate in your tuple, then it's going to use the all member. So let me show you that. Right now we have $16 million in sales. Let's use product. So I'm going to go into my product dimension. I'm going to go into my product category. And let's bring over only clothing. All right, so I'm going to bring over the clothing member. And then I need to close my tuple here at the end. And then I also need to put this on rows. And then when I run this, now I can see that my cells dropped from 16 million to 323,000. And it's showing me that I have 200 or $323,000 in sales for clothing for 2013. So if you want to kind of modify your result set, we're not using that where clause or that filter anymore like you would do in T-SQL. We're just specifying a coordinate in the cube, and then it returns the internet cells. So hopefully that's starting to make sense a little bit. And if we wanted to add here a specific geographical region, then we could bring those members in. We could add that into our tuple by simply putting a comma and then pull in another member from our geography dimension, which Geography actually is not related to internet cells, so that wouldn't work. So if I select internet cells here, notice that geography is not a related dimension, so we'd get some funny results there. But we could bring in our cells territory, which also has the countries. So let's go ahead and clean this up here. And then that is going to be it for this section. All right, so just writing a basic MDX query. All we covered here is pretty much we can put members here on the columns axis. We can also put them on the rows axis. Now, the one thing I didn't show you, let me show you this. If I do something like this, and I try to put these two members on my rows axis, which is also the one ordinal position, this is going to fail. So you must have the columns axis specified before you can use the rows. So let me show you this one last thing here in this video. And the, the message is actually, a, it's actually not too bad. It does tell me that axis numbers specified in a query must be sequentially specified and they cannot contain gaps. So that means you cannot go to the one axis without first specifying the zero axis. All right, so that is a requirement here if you're writing an MDX query.